again. I apologize for that. I don't know what happened. I got a random saving ch saving chunks error. I'll have to look into that for next time. Um, hopefully, it doesn't do this again too quickly. However, I am going to continue moving on with the video. Um, the recipe for a philosopher's stone is four pieces of redstone, four pieces of glowstone, and a slime ball. Now, the redstone and the glowstone are oops, my bad, are interchangeable, as you can hopefully see from my really fail moving skills there we go um doesn't matter where exactly they are as long as they're either in the corners or in the center you can't have them set up like this that won't work um now I'm, i know a lot of you are probably saying well glowstone that's kind of hard to get i got to go into the nether well, that's not a big deal you're gonna have to suck it up and go get some um once you have a philosopher's stone you can turn redstone into glowstone at a cost of four redstone per glowstone or you can alternatively go and get lots of glowstone and turn one glowstone into four redstone, which is a slightly better deal if you ask me. So it's much easier just to go into the nether on Peaceful, for example, get yourself a crap ton of glowstone and you're good. Um, the slime ball, I know a lot of you are probably really concerned about as slimes are really hard to come by. Now, with equivalent exchange, there is a new recipe for that. Seeds, sugar canes, sapling, and a bucket of water. Now, if I want to make myself a slime ball, when I click on this, and I will click on this just for an example, if I click on this, as you can see, we keep our bucket. The bucket just becomes an empty bucket. Now, that's a good thing. We don't want to lose our bucket because that would be extremely resource intensive having to make a new bucket every time. So if you need to make a bunch of slam balls, which you probably will if you need to make multiple philosopher stones, just simply collect a lot of seeds, a lot of sugar cane, a lot of saplings, and bring an empty bucket with you to a lake. Stand in front of the lake and fill up your bucket multiple times and just continue crafting as many slime balls as you need um oh yes once you have your first philosopher's stone you will find that there is actually a second or a second recipe for the philosopher's stone that will allow you to make it for much cheaper than four glowstone and four redstone it requires one glowstone one redstone and the slime ball of course you still need one slime ball so it's still kind of hard to come up with but it's not you know it's not that bad now Again, you might be concerned that you're going to lose your first Philosopher's Stone. I'll click on this just to show you. You won't lose your Philosopher's Stone. You do actually, in fact, get them both. So that's not too bad. You actually can do this multiple times without ever having to move this. You can just stack them up and then make multiple ones, although you do have to move each individual Philosopher's Stone down as they don't stack. Now back to Buildcraft for, for a minute or two. Hopefully it doesn't crash again. It's about that time. I'm going to show you how to make a quarry. What is a quarry good for? Well, the quarry is extremely useful for um, mining large areas and mining all the way down to the ground. Now, that might not sound like such a that might not sound like such a great idea as you'll have a giant gaping hole. However, if you've ever used a cobblestone generator, you can actually use a quarry to infinitely mine cobble without you having to stand there and watch it. So the recipe for a quarry is actually really resource intensive. It is three iron gears, two gold gears, two diamond gears, and a diamond pickaxe. Now, a word of warning. That diamond pickaxe cannot have sustained any damage whatsoever. If it's just sustained any damage, it will be useless to you. All right. So to make the gears, we're going to come over here to my kind of gearbox stack thing. And we're going to make ourselves some stone gears to start with. Now... In order to make gears, you have to upgrade the previous tier of gear. So in order to make seven stone gears, which is the number of gears we need in the total amount, we need seven wooden gears. I'll put seven in there, and I am going to split this up into four stacks so that I have my seven stone gears. I'm now going to upgrade my seven stone gears into iron gears. Now, um... You're probably aware that, and I'll show you this in a second once I get this all sorted out. Um, you take my seven iron gears. You'll probably remember from the recipe we only need three iron gears. So, when we upgrade to gold, we will set aside three iron gears. We'll put our four gears in here. We will make ourselves four gold gears. And then we will upgrade, because we need two gold gears for our final product, we're going to set aside two. And we're going to upgrade our final two into, uh, yes, 
I'm going to upgrade our final two into diamond gears. All right, now you know how to make a pickaxe. I'm not going to show you how to make a diamond pickaxe. The only other thing you need to know for this is it needs a piece of redstone. So one piece of redstone. Put in our three iron gears, our two gold gears, our diamond gear, and our pickaxe, which apparently does not stack. So I will remove one quarry. And I'll put this back in just to show the recipe again. That's a quarry. Now, if you've ever used a quarry, and I'm actually going to have to spawn myself in a thing just so I can show you. Okay. So if you've ever never used a quarry, here's what happens when you put it down. You end up with a yellow and black box. And this box represents where it's going to mine, everything inside. So this block here, directly beneath it, will not get mined. But this block, and this block won't get mined either, but this block will. And everything inside of it will get mined. Now, if I don't want, if I want to change the size of this, I need something that's called a landmark. This is how you make a landmark. It's simply four pieces of lapis over top of four redstone torches. And you will only need four landmarks, just so you guys know in advance. Now I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to put my quarry back in my quick slot. I'm going to take my landmarks, and I'm going to place them down like so. So I'm going to put my first one here, place, say, another one here. And I want it to be about yay tall. Now the one that's up in the air does need, to my knowledge, need to be directly placed directly above another landmark. So as you can see, they're actually, con con you can consider them in the same block area, just directly above each other. Now, I also need to add one down here, and I'm, in order to connect them all, simply right-click, so you can see that those two are now connected. If I right-click this one, I've made myself a box on the ground, and if I right-click the one on the top, I've now made my box. Now, in order to put down your quarry so that this will use this. If you put it down anywhere on the red line, that's useless. It won't work. Um, it, it won't actually connect to your new, newly resized area. You have to put it down directly in front of a landmark. And as you can see, your landmarks will drop and the yellow and black box is right where it's supposed to be. So in order to power a quarry, what do we need to use? Well, this is an industrial craft. This is build craft. And build craft requires engines. Now, redstone engines are the weakest by far and you would need more than you would be willing to make of red, redstone engines in order to power this thing. Um, I'm going to recommend making between four and six steam engines to power this, as that is actually, I believe, the recommended number of engines. The maximum you need to power one quarry is, I believe, eight steam engines, and in my opinion, eight is by far too many, or is two more than you would need, um, simply because you have to power them with charcoal, and six runs it just fine. Four is probably the bare minimum. Three, you can run it on three, but I'd recommend running it on anywhere from four to six. Um, now, obviously, as you can see, there's you're going to need a buildcraft pipe on the top to take all the items coming out of the quarry and pump them somewhere. And right here is going to be filled. So the maximum number of engines you can have hooked up to this is four. So you're probably wondering why I'm saying to make six. Well, here's why. There are some advanced pipes in Buildcraft, which are called conductive pipes. Um, there's only three kinds, so it's quite simple. There's a wooden conductive pipe, which looks like so. One wooden transport pipe. So I'm actually going to do. I'm actually going to show you how to do this. Wooden transport pipe with redstone, and I can make myself for every one transport pipe and every one redstone, I can make myself one wooden conductive pipe. And same with stone. And once I have my stone pipes. Same with gold conductive pipe. Two pieces of gold, two pieces of redstone gives me two gold conductive pipes. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, the wooden conductive pipe works on the same principle as the normal wooden pipe does. You use this to extract something. Well, in this case, you're using it to extract the power created by the steam engine. So you're when it, whatever wherever your steam engines are set up, you're going to have the first pipe they're connected to is going to be a wooden conductive pipe. If you don't, your engine simply won't connect to the pipes and you will be just wasting your time. Now, stone pipes and gold gold pipes are basically exactly the same in this instance. The gold no longer speeds it up. However, because this is transferring energy, there is a energy loss per pipe. And stone has, I don't know the exact number, I think it's 1%. I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me. Let's say the stone conductive pipe has a 1% energy loss per block. It means for every one block you travel, you lose 1% of the energy created by your engines. So if you have to travel more than 5 or 10 blocks, that's a major waste of energy. The gold blocks, however, allow you to 
travel for, I think it's like 0.1 or 0.2% energy loss per block. So you can travel much farther without losing as nearly as much energy, although it is slightly resource intensive, but it's actually not bad considering two pieces of gold and one piece of glass gives you eight pieces of gold pipe, which you can then turn into using this recipe, one pipe per and redstone will give you a golden conductive pipe. That's actually not bad considering all things. Now just to show you guys what these look like and how they actually would all connect together, I will actually put this down. This is a wood pipe and I'll actually put this in front of these so you can see what happens. If I put, oh, well that's a bad example. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this, those are my two golds, and this is my wooden pipe. So as you can see, it sits in front of it and it doesn't actually physically connect. But if I were to power it with something, say to coal, and of course I don't actually have anything to turn it on with, but basically you would see a blue line show up in the in the brown and go into the gold and it would just kind of run around in circles. Now, if I do this, if I were to do something like this, of course this is a bad example because you can't really tell whether or not it would actually run, but the energy will not enter the pipes unless it is a wooden pipe. So see as the wooden pipe is over here, this energy created by this engine would not actually enter. Um, the only other thing I really need to show you, I think, is simply the Buildcraft wrench, as I told you. Um, the Buildcraft wrench actually allows you to reorient your engines to point in a different direction. Say, for example, if I point, if I were, if I put this down, I'll do this for example, if I put this down, see how it points towards that engine. I don't want it to point towards that engine. I want it to point somewhere else. So I need to make myself a Buildcraft wrench to change its orientation. Now, this works with all the pipes as well. Um, you can use this mainly with the uh, iron pipe is where it's most useful. So I'm going to take my wrench, and I don't know if this will work right off the bat. Uh, it might not actually let me. No, so I'll have to pick these up and put these back down. So just give me a moment here. I'm actually going to put my stone pipe, and I'm going to put that there. All right, now when I right-click it, you can see it reorients it. And this has infinite number of uses. It never gets used up, so you only need one. Um, as you can see, I can change where I want it to point. Um, that's all for now, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If there's anything in here that you think I did wrong or didn't clarify clear enough, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'll do my best to clarify that in the next episode or even the next video if it's not part of this specific set. Um, if you liked what I did, please send me a like. That mean, gives me a heads up on you guys liking it. It lets me know that there are people who are interested in this and it gives me more motivation to actually make the next video. Um, if you don't like something again, please leave a comment or if you have any improvements you think I could make again, comment and you know, favorite like, subscribe, whatever you want. doesn't matter to me. Just let me know if you like it or don't like it. That way I can make improvements or continue doing what you guys like. Well, thanks guys. Uh, good luck and have fun.